It's the best tip. I tell my students every single day to do this over and over and over again. And in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what that best tip is. It's pretty simple. It's not rocket science, but so many students avoid it. So many students make mistakes. They get the problem wrong because they don't do it. And the best tip that I can tell you is when you're trying to graph a parabola in conic sections or just in general, like and you're given some information, plot the information. Because when you plot the information, you can understand the relationship between your, um, you can understand the, sorry, the relationship you have with your vertex, your focus, your directrix. So you can understand the orientation as well as which equation that you need to use to write the equation of your parabola. Still kind of look confused what I'm talking about. So let's go and take a look at what we have here. So if I'm going to go ahead and plot this, I'm going to put these on an XY graph, right? All right. So here's my XY graph. I have X equals zero. Now that's a directrix, right? So I'm going to use a dashed line here and I'm just going to use, make that red just to kind of make things a little bit simpler here. Okay. So that's X equals zero. Got it. Now my vertex is one half comma one. Now a lot of students will kind of get confused here because like one half, like how do I graph one half? Well, if here's one, two, and three, right? One half is just going to be like half, half to one, right? So we're going to go over one half and then we're going to go up one. All right. Now a lot of students will be like, I don't know how to write the equation here, but we need to understand something. Um, let's just kind of break this down real, like let's just kind of focus on what we can focus on. All right. So we have a vertex. Okay. We have the vertex and we have a directrix. Now, what do we know about the relationship of a parabola with the vertex and directrix, right? We know that the vertex is always going to be going away from the directrix. Okay. So it's going to look something like this. Now, obviously this kind of looks like a V it's a pretty bad parabola. I apologize for that. But, um, what you need to understand is like your vertex always opens up to your focus always. Right. And that the directrix is always going to be perpendicular to your axis of symmetry. That's what you need to remember. Okay. Your directrix is always perpendicular to your axis of symmetry. So we have our vertex or so we have our parabola opening up towards our focus. Okay. Um, and the other thing that we need to understand here is that relationship between our vertex and our focus, as well as the relationship between the vertex and the directrix. So when we're trying to go from vertex to directrix, that's going to be what we call our P. So P is going to equal to that distance. All right. Now we don't know what the distance is from our vertex to our focus. We just know it's going to, going to be to the right of the vertex. What we do have is the vertex, the distance from the vertex to the directrix, right? Now, again, that's going to be vertex to directrix. So um, distance and direction matters. So if we're at one half and we're going back to zero, we can say that that distance and direction is going to be a negative one half. Now, the formula for the distance from or the distance uh, from your vertex and directions from your uh, vertex to your directrix is going to be opposite of P. So if we say opposite of P is equal to a negative one half, well, we got to solve for P, right? Because when we're trying to write the equation, of the parabola, we need to know what P is. And let's actually do a quick little break here because I didn't write the equation. We can recognize here that this is a horizontal parabola, right? It's opening up to the right. So this equation here is going to be Y minus K quine squared equals a four P times an X minus H. Okay. So the a Y is going to be squared because it's a horizontal parabola. So anyways, let's go ahead and divide by negative one here. And I have P is equal to a positive one half. Okay. So P is going to be equal to a positive one half. Um, P is equal to a positive, positive one half. And now we can just go ahead and plug a chug. Now, again, what is our vertex? Remember our vertex guys is HK, right? So we have the H and we have the K and we have the P, which is positive one half. Now you can just plug it in, right? So Y minus K, which in this case is going to be a one quine squared equals a four times one half. It's a fraction, but it's okay. You can survive with a fraction times an X minus a one half. So now I have a Y minus one quine squared equals four times one half, which is going to be a two times a X minus a one half. Now it's time for the next video I have for you here.